Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, today's Bible reading comes from the book of Matthew, and it's Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. And it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. When I left school, I decided to take a year out before I went to medical school and decided I would try and do something which I probably wouldn't be able to do another time. So I went and tried to get a job as a bin man. I went along to Lewisham Borough Council uh, Refuse Yard and uh, didn't have any jobs as, as bin men, but uh, I did get a job in the recycling yard. And here's a picture of the recycling yard. As you can see, the bin men, bin lorries would um, take these um, trailers behind them and they would put into them um, cardboard, newspaper, anything that might be recycled, recycled and it would be the job of my team to um, uh, to put to, to move those uh, trailers um, and then tip them up in the onto a conveyor belt inside that um, building there, and then sort them out. And um, it's pretty heavy work moving those trailers and pretty dirty work. So the, uh, the recycling was often quite contaminated. And uh, here's a picture of me with my overall. And um, unfortunately, I think. Uh, I've got a little bit less hair now than I did in those days. Now it was expected that um, everybody would take a turn in helping um, in the market on Lewisham High Street. So we'd have some overtime um, at the end of the day. Um, I think once, once a week, or, I'm not sure about that. And um, it would involve the bin lorry taking you down to the market. You'd have to sweep the market and then throw the rubbish into the back of the bin lorry. These were the metal bins in those days, not the ones that they have nowadays. So heavy work. And to claim the overtime, you had to fill in the timesheet. And it was a single timesheet. Everybody had to um, put down the hours they worked. And everybody put down an extra hour. Now, I remember feeling uh, uncomfortable about that. And, uh, but trouble was, if I put down the actual hours, then, of course, it would show up on, the, on this um, timesheet. The uh, manage management would spot it, and they would wonder what's going on. Now, I'm afraid uh, in those days, I was just a teenager, and there were some tough bin men, and uh, I went along with it. I, I, I couldn't really stand up. And, uh, and do what was right, but I did feel uncomfortable. And today's pure, the beatitude is about purity, and part of that is integrity. And I didn't really show integrity uh, in uh, my behaviour then, however hard it might have been. And um, to be pure in heart means partly integrity, but partly also to be genuine, to be real people, and also to be sexually pure as well. Now, you might say that the bar seems too high. The other um, beatitudes seem more achievable to be poor, to be mourned, to mourn, to meekness, hunger and thirst, merciful. These are things which maybe we can achieve. But to be pure in heart, that seems pretty impossible. Just in case anybody is thinking that they can achieve it, let me just think a little bit more about what it means to be pure. So do you always act with integrity? Sadly, in our society nowadays, integrity is becoming less and less common. Politicians will lie if they have, if they, if they have to, or they will at least um, avoid speaking the tr what's true. And uh, they, they would say the end justifies the means. Do we sometimes exaggerate insurance claims or do we perhaps call in sick when we can really go into work? All sorts of things. Are we completely pure? And, and do we have integrity in all that we do? You know, I certainly failed as, as, um, in, when I was a teenager. And then are you always completely genuine? 
Are you a real person? Are you genuine in your motives? Not just the appearance, but the inner purity, even with our motives. Now, as I preach today, what are my motives now? Am I looking to uh, see if I get any likes on Facebook or maybe some nice comments? I've got some comments in the uh, chat here on Zoom. Uh, am I motivated by that or by just wanting to pass on what God wants to say this morning? And uh, I wonder how you are, what your motives are. If you're giving a present to somebody, are you just wanting to please them or are you wanting their gratitude for them to appreciate you? And um, if you give money to charity, are you wanting a good feeling from that? Are our motives pure? Are we genuine in what, when we do things? And then sexually, you might say, well, I am pure there. I'm faithful in, in my marriage or relationship. Um, but it's more than that. It's not just the appearance. It's having uh, a purity inside us, in our imagination. What's our imagination like? What do we think about? And of course, only God sees that. And yet, that still has an effect on us. What we think affects our behaviour. So that also is important, not just looking as if we are pure, but really pure. Pretty difficult. So you might say, is all this worth the effort? Is it impossible? Well, Jesus says the result of doing that is that we see God. And this uh, refers probably to the seeing God at the end of time. But uh, we can still see God uh, now, in, in a sense. We can appreciate his love for us. We can appreciate his presence. We don't see God as we're going to see him, but we have some sense of God's presence. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, verse, verse 12, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. So our vision now is partial, um, but we can still polish the mirror. We can still, um, by our purity, improve our sight of God. We can see God better. Now, we need to keep perspective over this because um, this um, verse about purity of heart is the only time in the New Testament where purity is mentioned in this way. So Jesus didn't spend all his time telling his disciples to be pure. He told them that they should be loving God and obeying God. So purity is important. But we mustn't get it out of proportion. We mustn't make ourselves feel guilty because we're failing so often in this. We need to remember that because of Jesus, we are forgiven. We are forgiven. So take it seriously, but let's not get it out of proportion. So to become pure in heart, we need God's help. We need the Holy Spirit. But there are some practical things that I think we can do, particularly as we think about sexual purity. So if we're going to see God, we need to have a pure heart. And if to see things, we need a light. And uh, for a light to work, it needs to have a plug that works as well. And for a plug to work, there's three things in it. So if we're going to live pure lives, let's think about some three things that can help in that. First of all, we need to be earthed in God. Those of you who don't know your plugs, that's the earth, earth pin. And we need to be earthed. So if we're going to be pure, um, fully pure, we need to be reading our Bibles regularly, praying regularly, maybe meditating regularly as well. Um, but we need to be positive and negative about things. And uh, that means that some things we need to avoid. We need to do less of some things, other things we should do more of. So if we're going to be pure, uh, particularly in, in the sexual purity, we need to be earth, do some things more, some things less. And um, that means if we're going to be doing things less, that we um, be, are careful about what we watch on TV, what, we, um, what films we watch, what books we read. We need to do less of some things, just like an alcoholic will um, avoid even the taste of alcohol. We need to be careful that we nip things in the bud. We avoid things that can get into our mind. Once things have got established in our minds, once we've got fantasies and things going in our mind, it's much harder to deal with. A habit can take about six weeks to, to develop. But if we're going to change the way we think, the way that we, uh, our minds are tuned in. We need to take. We need to be persevering because it can take quite some time to change things. 
but it's not just being negative, it's also being positive as well. It means thinking good things, looking at good films, spending time with God. And this, these things are important because um, pornography is a real issue in society. I came across a survey in America, and in that survey it found that uh, of church-going people, about two-thirds of church-going people watch porn fairly regularly. And that was men and women. Men watched more than women, but it was both. Um, so a high proportion, even of church-going people. So what we think is, is, is important, and uh, we need to remember the three parts if we're going to deal with that. Not It's earthed in God, positive and negative, being careful, nipping things in the bud. So if we're going to live lives of integrity, pure lives, integrity, if we're going to be genuine and real, if we're going to be pure spiritually, we need to remember that it's not easy. We need God's help. But if we are properly wired, doing those sorts of things, then we can see God better. And one day we will actually see God face to face.